Good afternoon. This is Tom Asprey of the Viper Report. It's Thursday, May 21st, just about 15 minutes before the market closes. If you're ever trying to find the articles that I contribute to Forbes.com, you'll search Forbes Tom Asprey. You'll come up with this page. And if you ever have any uh, problems with insomnia, I have over 1,500 articles posted there, so I, I'm sure one of them will put you to sleep. In last weekend's article, Our Stock Market Bulls on Borrowed Time, I took a look at the bear market rally in 2008 to see what we could learn from that for the current rally we've had. The market bottomed at about the same time in March of 2008. We had a rally into about May 21st. You can see this point one. We formed a doji near the Stark Bands. They tell you when you should be buying or selling. And... Uh, we had a sharp drop, then a rebound, and as we head into June, the selling picked up substantially. Below this, we have the NYSE advanced decline line, which I frequently talk about and teach extensively about. You know, we formed a clear uptrend by April, yeah, and uh, we started to weaken in the end of May. We broke through that uptrend, rebounded back above the moving average, below it, above it, and then the selling picked up, and you can see as we head into July, the AD line was well below its declining WMA, which is a neg negative sign. In terms of momentum, here we have the S&P 500 during that same period in 2008. We have the MACD and signal line, the blue and the purple line. We can see they peaked in early May. As I mentioned in an earlier broadcast, that was when the AAII bullish sentiment peaked. When the market was making its high in the latter part of May, the MACD sig and signal lines were making lower highs, this line B. That's in contrast to the higher highs in prices. So this line B represents a negative or bearish divergence, which is consistent with the top. That was confirmed by the MACD histogram, which I developed crossing below the zero line. Both stayed solidly negative into July as the market at dropped well below the March lows. So as of last Friday's close, we have the Spider Trust, the SPY that that tracks the SP 500. And we can see a drop down to the lower Stark band. So it's a high risk time to be selling, a low risk time to be buying. Since then, we've rebounded sharply. We've moved above these prior peaks in the SPY. As of a week ago, roughly, the AD line was still in an uptrend, tested the support and we had bounced. Now we're back above the moving average, but still below these past two peaks as of Wednesday's close. Below that, we have the MACD and signal line, as well as the MACD histogram, which formed lower highs, line B, as it started to diverge from prices. Higher highs in price, lower highs in the histogram. It was moving above and below the zero line when we went to press last weekend. So AMACD and signal line have crossed slightly, but don't show any strong signs of increasing downside momentum as we went to press with a close on May 15th, 2020. As this hourly chart shows you of the S&P 500, we had a sharp rally on Monday, flattened out. Then late Tuesday, we plunged down to 29.22. That's the key level of support on a short-term basis. Since then, we moved up to new rebound highs on Wednesday and have been kind of drifting lower in today's session. We're currently down 23 points. The Dow is down 105 points as we head into the close of trading. So we're still favoring the short side of the market here, but we're not getting aggressively short until the market starts to trend lower like it did in 2008. Though the market has been quite strong this past week, that is still our f favored scenario. If you'd like to learn more about bear market rallies, you can go to viperreport.com. If you'd like to learn more about the markets and be taught technical analysis, you can take the special offer we did for Wealth365 is still in effect, 199 for 90 minutes of in-depth one-on-one training. Uh, you can ask me your questions or I can help design a course for you in that 90 minutes. Uh, I've been quite busy with that. Uh, unfortunately, we're all still at home. If you'd like specific advice on either ETFs or stocks, you can go to the top of the page and click on one of these links. It'll take you to PayPal. Each service is just $34.95 per month. 
It includes six trading lessons, about a $45 value. And you get two full-sized reports a week lately. Actually, for the last month or so, I think we've been doing two extra reports a week, if not every day having extra reports. When the markets are volatile, I try to reach out to you and tell you what I think is going on. Uh, you can subscribe online and cancel online if you're so inclined. So that's all I have for today. Hope you all have a great long weekend. And I'll try to update you over the weekend or let you know about my next Forbes article. Thank you.